We're going to call for that. I think we're calling for our guests. Hey, look, it's Moses. All right. Moses, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you, Pastor Todd. Moses has been with us all week to help us learn about God's promises, his experience in the wilderness. So I thought, what a better way to wrap up this week with you all than to have Moses help us to understand a little bit of some of the things we've been talking about with the kids. He's been so great to teach our children about the promises that God makes that help us trust God. So I thought I would um, ask Moses a few questions. Is that okay? It's okay. Thank you for coming all this way through time and space. His beard got a little longer on the way. Moses, if you'll remember, um, on day one, you were reminding us that as God was sending you off to Egypt, back to Egypt, back to Pharaoh, to set the Israelites free, he told you something that was very important. He said something that made a huge difference for you. Do you recall what that was? Pastor Todd, uh, God told me or convinced me to go back to Egypt by saying very simply but very, very forcefully that he would always be with me. He would be with you. This is a very important promise that God made that we were trying to, to work into the kids on day one of our vacation Bible school, that God promises to be with us. There is a scripture in Exodus that helps us to understand that, that says very simply, I will be with you. He says this to Moses. And as you and the Israelites were making your way out of Egypt, how did you experience God fulfilling that promise that he would be with you? Oh, God was with us the whole way. He was with us in the swirling wind that he used to confuse the Egyptians. He was with us when he parted the Red Sea long enough for two million of us to go through in safety. Wow, that's, that's amazing. And, and Charlton Heston wasn't even there, was he? I didn't see him. <laughs> he was, it was you and the Israelites, that's right. You know, Moses, it's interesting because today um, Many of us are facing incredibly huge walls of water that we don't see how we're going to be able to cross. We, we face mountains that we don't seem to understand how we could possibly get over, whether it's uh, death or illness or whether it's the loss of a loved one, broken relationships, um, you know, trying to figure out how do we raise our family, our children in today's turbulent culture uh, with so much negativity around us. You know, if you're a student, how are you going to accomplish to get all your schoolwork done? Um, Moses, what advice would you give to us today that we're facing those kinds of situations in our life? What advice would you give us to help us to face those things? Pastor Todd, God doesn't change. He was the same then as he is now. So you know that if he was with us, then be comforted that you are not alone. He is with you. That same God who helped me and my people so long ago is here to help you with whatever your circumstances may be. So when you realized God was with you, that brought you comfort. That brought you peace. And we can have that same thing with us. If we would just trust God. God is faithful. God is steadfast, as he was then, as he is now. So God was with you in the wilderness, and you were in the wilderness a long time, weren't you? Yes, 40 long years. So you had some specific hard times. Didn't you, in fact, run out of food and run out of water? More than once. We, we ran out of food almost oh, about a month into it. We ran out of water immediately. So God was there every time. I asked God, what would he do to feed the people, to give them water, to keep them from starvation, dehydration? And God sent manna all over the camp in the morning 
and he's a flock of quail every night in time for the evening meal. God was there. We had water any time we needed it simply by miraculously touching a rock and it would spring from the water mm. with water. Wow, that's amazing. You know, in the Bible, as Jesus was teaching his disciples about how to pray, he said to them that God the Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask. God knew that you were hungry. God knew that you were thirsty. And he didn't just come to be with you. He didn't just stand by you and listen to your tummy growl. He actually provided that thing that he knew you needed. Manna, quail, water, food, something to drink. So we need to remember today that when we are facing something and, and we have this need, a, a, a practical need, a spiritual need, an emotional need, just like you guys did, that God does not only just want to stand by us, but he wants to help practically, help us with our physical needs, help us with our spiritual needs, help us with our emotional needs. And when we pray, just like Jesus reminded us, he already knows. So when we go to pray to God, we can enter that prayer with a greater confidence, right? That's correct. We can go to God with a confidence that he, he will provide what we need, not always what we want. My daughter, Alyssa, would like a pony. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we don't have a pony in our yard, but um, she has not gone hungry. She's not gone thirsty. She has parents who love her, care for her, shelter. She has what she needs, and God is providing that for her. And he wants to provide for us. So when I go to God in prayer, I can trust him because he's faithful about his promises. Moses, when you went to speak to God, did you believe that he would listen? Did you believe that he would help in some way, just as God knew what would be best for you and for the Israelites? By our own experience, we knew that God was always trustworthy. He knew what we needed long before we needed it. He knew over and over again that we could rely on him. And he's the only one that we could rely on. And so you lived your life, and we today need to be living our lives with the confidence, especially our prayer lives, the confidence that God is with us, and he provides for us everything that we need even before we could even ask for it. Yes. Thank you, Moses. On the third day, if you remember, you were trying to tell our children about how God gives us strength. Was there this one time that you went to, the, to, went to war with the uh, Amalekites? Oh, I remember the Amalekites very well, yes. Yeah, can you... Um, and didn't you hold up your staff for like a really long time? I mean... Didn't you hold it up the entire time that we were in war? That was God's plan. I had to hold my staff up all day. And God strengthened this 80-year-old body to help hold it up. And when I ran out of strength, he got my brother Aaron and my friend Her, and they held my arms up, and so we were able to hold it up all day. Because that was how God was giving encouragement and strength to Joshua and his young army against the Amalekites. And they won. They did. I mean, and it was that strength that God gave you, not the number of soldiers that we had. It was not the amount of men or the amount of weapons or the kind of weapons that we had. It wasn't the strategic planning that Joshua did with his leaders. It was the strength that God gave you, gave to Aaron and her, and gave to Joshua that allowed for, for your people to win. It was God. It was God's plan. God executed it, and you could rely on God to do anything that was needed if you needed. I find it interesting, Moses, that God gave different kinds of strength there. There was this physical strength that he was giving you to literally hold your arms up well beyond where the lactic acid would want your muscles to come down. He gave physical strength and, a, and sort of a, an emotional strength to Aaron and her, sort of this relationship component. He gave them the strength to help you. And then he gave the strength of confidence to Joshua to know that, that God was there. God was providing. God was giving them the strength to you and to everybody. And he gives strength in different ways. And I think that's the lesson for us today. I mean, 
Sometimes God strengthens us physically to accomplish a task. You might have seen or heard stories of, of sort of superhuman feats where there's a car accident and somebody's able to lift something that they couldn't otherwise lift um, to help somebody. Uh, that's physical strength. He sometimes strengthens physically our bodies to, to fight disease or to fight illness. That's a physical strengthening. But sometimes the strength that he provides is a mental strength. You know, I can think of times when I've had to go in for job interviews or go in for, I, I remember most uh, clearly the, the time where I had to go into my ordination exams and, um, and I had to recall all this information. And so he strengthened my, my mind to be able to think clearly and recall and put down what I needed to put down. And then, of course, to strengthen us spiritually, because how many times do we find ourselves saddened, grieved, um, despondent, lost? And God can provide that spiritual strength for us to endure, to get through circumstances. Just like when you were in the wilderness, I would imagine it must have been tough 40 years. That's a long time. There must have been times where you felt like, is this ever going to end in your spirits? But God strengthened you, didn't he? He did. You know, I'm reminded of a, of a, of a mentor of mine. His name is um, Steve Hayner. He's the president of uh, Columbia Theological Seminary, where I went to school to learn about your life and, and other things. Steve is an incredible person. He was my professor for evangelism and later became the president of the seminary. And only about two and a half, three months ago, he was diagnosed with cancer very aggressive cancer, and he and his wife have been putting out um, updates on CaringBridge, which is a website that, that updates people electronically about how they're doing, and the message that he's putting out there, it's unbelievable. The strength that he's expressing that God is giving him spiritually, emotionally, mentally, even though his body is failing, and the reality is that unfortunately Mr. Hainer will probably not be with us much longer. The strength that he's giving that comes through in his writing, it's a clear fulfillment of God's promise. I'm thankful for what he has written. He and, and many others have inspired me about the strength that God gives us. Moses, long after your people made it into the promised land, long after you were dead, <laughs> They rebelled again against God, refusing to be obedient, and were taken over by the Babylons and taken into exile. During those difficult years, God spoke to the prophet Jeremiah, and he told him to say to the people this, For I am with you, and I will save you, says the Lord. This sounds very much like what he told you so long before. Yes, God doesn't change. He said he would save us, and he proved over and over again that he would. He saved us from slavery with the Egyptians. He saved us from starvation. He saved us from dehydration. He saved us from being inundated by the Amalekites. He saved us at every time. Every time we needed him, he saved us. Moses, how do you feel like he personally saved you in those, in those years? I think that God proved that he was a good friend. God supported me when I needed him. We comforted each other. God is very active. He is doing things all the time. And if we follow his advice, the blessings will continue to come. So God promised to be with us. Right. He promised to provide everything that we need according to him. He promises to provide for us physical, emotional, and spiritual strength. And he provides to go beyond that to actually saving us. So do you think that if today all of us here in our lives focused on all the ways that God has blessed us, helped us, saved us, that we could be like you, a person of great faith, person who is obedient to God, a person that has developed a strong relationship with their Lord? Pastor Todd, I think God longs for people who 
can share their triumphs and share their problems. He wants us to be his friend. He wants us to be continually in his presence. That's what God wants. That was his vision for the nation of Israel, and it's his vision for us today. Yeah. Moses, I bet there were times when you wish that God would have just sort of snapped his fingers and taken you from the Red Sea all the way to the river and skipped all that wilderness time. Sometimes we want to say, God, why can't you just skip over this difficult stuff? And we wonder, why do we need to go through these things? Why do we have to bother in our lives facing times that are tough? Loss of loved ones, grieving, all those sorts of things that we've already talked about. We could sit here and we could talk about the why for a long time. But we have to remember that God's ways are not our ways. You probably thought that a couple times. <laughs> God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the end, you experience that saving. You experience that friendship of being provided for, of being not alone because he was with you. And that we come to our last day of Vacation Bible School, Moses, when, when you were helping us to understand about God guiding us. You said, King David said that he would bless the Lord who guides him. Did God guide you, Moses? And if so, how? God guided me the whole, my whole life. God started guiding me when I was a baby, when I was in a, in a basket in the River Nile. And I grew up, because of that, I grew up in the Pharaoh's royal court. I learned all about how Egypt was being governed. He guided me into Midian when I was escaping from Egypt. And I met my wife, Zipporah. I wouldn't have if he hadn't have taken me into Midian. So all the time that we were walking through the vast Sinai Peninsula <laughs> desert, God was guiding us and helping us. And I think he provided a physical guidance. I mean, he was providing things literally for you to see, sort of a, a, a light for you to follow in, in, in uh, a wind tunnel during the day and a, yes. and a fire by night. By night. Mm -hmm. He was also guiding your spirit through, through words that he would say and, and words of comfort and, and, and through fulfilling his promises, like feeding you and giving you drink and all those things. So he was guiding you through physical means, but he was also guiding you in, in a spiritual way. But how did you know it was God? How did you know that <laughs> science didn't just blow a wind and there wasn't some campfire that caught some sparks and wind were there and you just sort of guessed and it was pure luck that this bounced into that and you ended up over where you were supposed to be? How would you know it was God? <laughs> Have you ever seen a cyclone come up in the desert and be in a very small place? That's what happened. Yeah. God confused the Egyptian army, not us. Yeah. When the staff I used to point to the sun and God said that he was more powerful than their God sun, we weren't in the dark, only the Egyptians. Mm. When we went through the vast Sinai desert, God every day had a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Who could have done that but God? So you didn't have a GPS unit you were following. <laughs> <laughs> no, God is our global positioner. In thinking of all these promises God made and fulfilled for you, Moses, um, thinking back and reflecting on, on your whole life uh, as, as you can, how has that affected you? What, what, what effect has this had on your life? I think God has proven to me that he's a, the best friend we ever had. And he needed my comfort, and I needed his comfort. And that is how I lived my life for 40 years in the wilderness. And I still would live my life as long as he would let me live. God has made the promises to always be with us, to give us what we need, not necessarily always what we want to give us strength for specific situations, physical, emotional, spiritual strength. He promises to save us, and he promises to guide us. We know these things because they're 
told to us by God through his word. We don't have to wonder, we don't have to guess what is God going to do for us. He is very clear about these things. These promises are timeless. They were, as you said, as good then as they are now. They're every bit as powerful as they have been. So I want to encourage us all to learn from our friend Moses here and to learn from God and God's word that he is faithful, he is loving, he is not only our best friend, but he is also our God, powerful and mighty, loving and merciful, compassionate, and able to accomplish all the things that we're not, and able to transform us from lives that we were living in the past, lives that would not be pleasing to him, to lives that would be faithful to a loving life, a serving life, just like you lived. So let's remember God's word, God's promise. Let us thank Moses for being with us today and all week as he's helped our children to learn about these promises, to know that they are real for them as they are real for us. Moses, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.